Now, it took some time, but I'm finally back down to my normal recording schedule and all that, so you guys can expect a new one from here on, every Saturday, 8 a.m., just like usual. So, hopefully, you guys are still able to track these uh, timestamps right here next to my head, and you're able to get to where you want to be in the video pretty seamlessly. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first thing I'm going to be talking about today is Sony's new pixel structure for uh, mobile image sensors. On its own, and in its own right, it doesn't really sound too interesting, does it? However, the biggest reason it's actually going to be useful for the rest of us is that currently, the PlayStation VR uses a camera and a, a pair of lights in order to be able to track your PlayStation VR using outside in tracking. However, using this this new pixel structure, which would make each one far more useful, it will allow it will allow the camera to be able to focus on each and every single pixel rather than every other one. That being said, it will allow for far easier and far more effective tracking while you're either while you're trying to beat up the monsters in Skyrim or trying to get the best high score in Beat Saber. What, whatever it is you decide to be doing in PlayStation VR, you will have a much better experience on the next generation hardware, assuming it uses this new pixel structure. That's, however, the biggest drawback that is going to see is the uh, refresh rate. While we haven't seen any news about what kind of improvements we could expect out of that next generation, or that they've even started working on it, remains to be seen. But until then, one thing we can rest assured on is that this new system is going to make tracking significantly easier. Now, the next thing I want to talk about today is an interview that Michael Brash, the chief VR scientist at Facebook, had with VR Gear earlier this week. Now, as a part of this interview, he made a couple bold claims. First, he said that the next generation of VR hardware would be created because Oculus themselves designed it, likely with himself at the helm. Second, he said that augmented reality glasses that is, those that would be socially acceptable and fully accepting of the world around you at large, are at least going to be five years away. Now, as far as what the next generation of HMDs is going to look like, that remains to be seen. However, one thing I can tell you right now is that it's going to require some some significant power boosts. In order to get that boost, the most likely source is going to be through quantum computing. I'm sure some of you understand what what that is, but I don't have time to really go into it in depth or explain that part. But that that that's what I can tell you about where we're going to be able to get the power and the speed necessary to be able to get the next generation VR HMDs. Now, as far as the augmented reality glasses are concerned, he touched on a few primary concerns. First, the form factor. They are quite a ways away from meeting some form of realistic, socially acceptable form factors. That is, like I said earlier, ones that match these. Ones that people wouldn't really notice, or if they do notice, they don't really care enough, because they aren't very obtrusive, or they, they don't take up much space. Now, one of the other things he touched on was that because it would be a fairly small, a, a, smarly, a fairly small size, it can't really 
dissipate much heat without making your your head well it, it it'll burn up your face if it if it if it dissipates too much heat that, that's all I can really say the, <laughs> and then finally how are you going to be able to interact with the world around you you're still able to see everything but without interacting with it it's just a, a one-way filter and we, we've already got video filters okay we've already got those so as far as interacting with it the best we're able to do right now is augmented reality gloves but the simple fact that the gloves at this point are huge and well very cumbersome could very easily make the whole uh, socially acceptable thing a little bit more difficult however given that time that amount of R&D over the course of five six years we may see that excuse me we may see the size of those gloves shrink so that it they appear more closely in size to something that you would that that you could expect people to wear like I, I don't know Michael Jackson's gloves but hopefully we'll be able to figure whatever that looks like out over the next few years and at this rate I'm sure that Mr. Abrash is going to be one of the people leading that charge and I'm also going to talk a little bit about the games that are releasing over the next week. But because I'm horrible at actually describing things and hyping them up, what I'm going to do is just give you the names and what their supported platforms are. And then down in the description below, I'll provide links to the Steam pages for all of these. So first one, on Monday, we have Raygun Commander VR2. That one is supported on all PC VR headsets. We also have Strings, which is available on the Valve Index, HTC Vive, and the Oculus Rift. Also on Monday, we have RC Plane VR, available on the Oculus Rift. However, on the Steam page, it says it's not available until the 15th. So, it, I'm thinking that one is only going to be available on the Rift Store on, on Monday. Now, also on the Steam page, we have Fighting More, available for all the PC VR headsets. On Tuesday, we have the VR Canyon, available for the Valve Index, HTC Vive, and Oculus Rift. We have Free Company VR, available on Wednesday, for the Index, Vive, and Rift. On Thursday, we have Boiling Steel, Treeface, available for all PC VR headsets. And finally, on Thursday, we have Food Factory VR, available for the Index and the Vive. Now, like I said, you guys can find the Steam pages to all those in the description down below. And hopefully, one of them might be good for you. One of them might not. I don't know. You decide. For those of you that want to get into the HTC Vive Cosmos but haven't quite gotten around to it yet, it is currently on sale on Amazon for $600 as opposed to the typical $700. This one is going to give you a resolution of 1440 by 1700 per eye with a refresh speed of 90 hertz if I remember correctly. And the downside to this is that it is going to be a PC tether headset as opposed to the Quest, which, well, you know, that's a standalone, blah, blah, blah. But this one on sale, $600, Amazon, blah, blah, blah. Follow the link down below and enjoy that. Bye.